Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from AzureAutomation.com. Welcome to my all new course, Understanding Docker. And in this lecture, we'll be talking about an introduction and installation of Docker. Well, I have already spoke about Docker almost like seven years before, while the Docker was kind of in infancy. I have covered quite a lot of details on the Docker by then as well, like what is containers, what is image, and how to do installations and all those details, and also Docker Compose and stuff. I've also talked about the Docker for Windows, which is the version of Docker that you can run the Docker with the Windows container images. So I have already spoke about that as well. And that series is also available in YouTube for you right now. And also it's available in Udemy. And once again, even though the core concept of Docker remains the same, the user interface of Docker desktop and the way you can use Docker and the landscape that you can use the Docker has entirely changed. And in fact, right now, Docker supports quite a lot of different architectures of processors to execute. So we'll be talking about all these details in this new series in 2024 and understand how things have improved in Docker and also we'll understand the core concept of Docker once again. Well, as that said, what is this Docker? Docker is an open platform for developing, shipping and running applications. And Docker enables you to separate your application from your infrastructure so that you can deliver software quickly. It utilizes containerization to package application and their dependencies into container, which are lightweight, portable, and efficient. I know if you are new to Docker, these sentences doesn't make any sense, but the core idea of the Docker is that Docker is an open platform, help you to run and ship the application and even build the application using this Docker container. Just keep this in mind. And most importantly, Docker containers can run consistently across various environment, such as development, testing and production, ensuring that the application behaves the same regardless of where they are deployed. And you might have heard this analogy many times while you work with the developer that the application works better in their machine and not in the tester's machine. Those problems can be completely avoided using Docker because right now with Docker, the same application with all the dependencies can be shipped into tester's machine and you can run there. And the same thing you can use it for staging pre-prod and production environment without any problem because that's what Docker is and that is the power of Docker. Just for now, consider Docker container as a portable machine or a virtual machine which runs your application with all its dependencies. That's what is Docker container is all about in a very, very high level. Well, as that said, in this entire course, we are going to be covering quite a lot of important concepts of Docker, something like Docker images, containers, Docker files, Docker Compose, Desktop, Hub, Swarm, Registry, online builds and stuff. So this course is going to have a lot of detail that you really require for getting started with Docker and using it for your application development as well as for testing the application. Well, as that said, we'll first focus on the installation of the Docker. And Docker, as I told you, in 2024, it has evolved so much. You can run Docker desktop, not only in Windows machine, but you can run in Linux as well as in Mac operating system. Way back, like seven years before, you can just use Docker desktops just in the Windows machine, not in Linux machine or the Mac operating system. It was quite harder to do that. But right now you can just do everything in Windows, Mac and Linux operating system. And in fact, it also supports 64-bit, 32-bit, and ARM architecture processors without any problem. So the Docker desktop also runs in Windows ARM operating system, Mac ARM operating system, as well as the Linux operating system without any problem. That is the another major benefit. So if you have an Apple M1 processor chip, then you can run it. Also, if you have a Snapdragon Qualcomm Elite X processor, then you can also run the Docker desktop without any problem. So those things were not there before. And in fact, the ARM architecture itself was not there in seven years before, but all these are right now being supported in Docker. And there are many ways that we can use Docker, not just by running with the Docker desktop alone. You can use Docker to run from the Docker desktop using Docker extension in VS Code and also using multipass of Canonical. So all these are the ways that you can use Docker to spin up the containers from an image and run your application inside the container and see how it works. So these are the ways that you can use the Docker, but the one that we are gonna be mostly focusing on is gonna be the Docker desktop and the Docker extension in VS Code. And this course will be using Windows operating system as well as Mac operating system interchangeably. And the Mac, which I have, is gonna be the M1 processor chip, which is gonna be an ARM processor. So we are gonna see how the same Docker desktop can be used to run in different architectures and different operating system without any problem. And you will see that is 
zero difference both those ecosystems and infrastructures so let's see how we can start the installation process over here so i have my windows 11 operating system over here as i told you we'll be switching pretty quickly to the mac operating system but i will show you the installation part of docker desktop in the windows operating system so all you have to do it is just google it and search for docker desktop so just go and search for docker desktop and download and you will see that there is this docker desktop link and you can just go ahead and download it from here and you will see that the docker.com has got quite a lot of details over here and also they will show you what is the power of the docker desktops and all those details so i'll first go and download the docker for windows and you also see that it's going to show you docker for mac intel chip and apple silicon chip and download for linux operating system so we are going to be using the windows operating system this time so i'm just going to download it and once the downloading is done i'm going to go ahead and install the docker desktop over here and you'll also notice that while you run the docker desktop in windows operating system you may need to install the wsl over here as you can see that you can use wsl2 instead of the hyper v and hyper v is a hypervisor which is going to run the mobi app linux before like seven years before and there have been so many transition happened after then and now there is a wsl2 or windows subsystem for linux 2 is available in windows 10 and 11 operating system so you can also use that so if you have already enabled wsl2 you can easily start using it and i have already enabled the wsl2 in my windows machine that's the reason why i can just right away use it if you have not enabled it you can also google search and see how you can enable the wsl2 in your windows machine it is quite straightforward and once you have the wsl2 you can also install the ubuntu distro from here so you can just search for the app store and then go ahead and search for ubuntu from here and then you can install it so that it can just install it for you so if you just go and search for ubuntu over here so this is the ubuntu app and you can see that this is going to be installing it for you and you can use this for your wsl as you can see this mentioned over here so that's the thing that you have to do and hopefully it is all there in my machine already but if you don't really have it already you just have to do that one additional step while you install the docker desktop in your windows machine but if you're going to be using the docker desktop in linux operating system or in mac operating system you don't really have to do all these things because the docker desktop is going to use the linux kernel directly over there and you may be asking hey karthik mac is not linux operating system but once again it is going to have a Linux operating system for you within the Docker desktop, which is going to help you run all these things for you. And Linux operating system, by default, the host itself is Linux. So there is no special Linux needed over there. So I will let this whole installation to happen and we'll see once the installation is fully done. As you can see that the installation is fully done. So I'm just going to close this over here. And now let's try to open the docker and see if the docker desktop just launches up so i have the docker desktop over here and you will notice that the docker desktop is gonna come up over here for the first time with some subscription service agreement and most importantly you should notice here that if you're going to be using docker desktop in your company which has more than 250 employees or more than 10 millions in annual revenue then you need to use the paid subscription and if you are not any of these like me then you are free to use this whole docker desktop without paying even a single penny to them so i'm just going to go ahead and accept it and you will notice that you'll be welcomed with the uh, docker desktop to sign up for the subscription model well i'm going to show you the docker hub later in this particular course but for now i'm just going to continue without signing in and i'm just going to say a full stack developer and i'm just going to do before the hobby project and i'm going to hit continue there we go so that's the docker desktop as you can see over here and there are so many things you can see in the docker desktop for the first time you'll notice that there is going to be a containers tab there is going to be an image tab there are volume tab and builds tab docker scout and extensions so these are quite new and we'll see how we can use all these things in the docker desktop from our next lecture while we start creating an image and using it to run as a container and you'll also notice that there is a setting tab well, I was just talking about the WSL2 for you. And in the general tab, you'll notice that if you scroll down, you will see that use the WSL2 based engine and it is going to be improving the performance than the Hyper-V backend. 
That's what I'm currently using it over here. As I told you, I have already installed WSL2 within my machine. That's the reason why Docker has not asked anything for me to install WSL2. But if you don't really have it, then you gotta be installing it for your machine. And it's all there. That's the reason why it's all showing up for me. So that is the only thing that you need to do as an extra part in the installation in Docker desktop. Now, next lecture, we'll see how we can learn even further concepts like container and images.